Welcome from Anaheim, California. Today we are going to be continuing on with the dedication of the temple. And as I was sitting here, I was thinking of all the beautiful places that we can go for retreats with sisters and brothers in Christ. Within just an hour, I could be in the mountains skiing. We can be in the ocean surfing. We can be hiking in the mountains. There's so many beautiful things to see here. And I've been to so many amazing retreats. But one thing I found out, you can't stay on the mountaintop. You can go to a retreat and become really, really filled to overflowing, but you have to come home and you have to go back to work and you have to live. This is the real world. And uh, so in a sense, this is kind of a follow-up. They've been on the mountaintop. Now they have to get down to the nitty-gritty. So if you're ready to get down to the nitty-gritty of walking with the Lord, let's open this passage of Scripture and let's put some feet to our faith. First Kings chapter 9, verses 1 through 9. When Solomon had finished building the temple of the Lord and the royal palace and had achieved all he had desired to do, the Lord appeared to him a second time, as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard the prayer and plea you have made before me. I have consecrated this temple which you have built by putting my name there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. As for you, if you walk before me in integrity of heart and uprightness, as David your father did, and do all I command and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne over Israel forever, as I promised David your father when I said, You shall never fail to have a man on the throne of Israel. But if you or your sons turn away from me and do not observe the commands and decrees I have given you, and go off to serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel from the land I have given them and will reject this temple I have consecrated for my name. Israel will then become a byword and an object of ridicule among all peoples. And though this temple is now imposing, all who pass by will be appalled and will scoff and say, Why has the Lord done such a thing to this land and to this temple? People will answer, because they have forsaken the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of Egypt, and have embraced other gods, worshipping and serving them. That is why the Lord brought all this disaster on them. Now, I'm the type of person that I have to fin finish one task before I go to another. Like, I have to finish washing the dishes before I start sweeping, or I have to finish studying to teach something before I start practicing a piece on the piano. I'm just like that. And I think Solomon was kind of like that because it says he had finished the temple of the Lord. So we see Solomon is somebody that finishes what he starts, and I give him credit because it says that he had achieved all he had desired to do. That's a good prayer, isn't it? Lord, help me to achieve all that I desire to do. And we know that when we put our hope and our faith in the Lord, that he helps us finish those things that he puts on our heart to do, especially in ministry, even though sometimes things get hard. It's his work. It's not our work. And a few months ago, the Lord really spoke to my husband and I about our work here at the Cornerstone, is it's not what you can do for me, it's what I can do for you. Because we know that in Christ, we can do all things. And so we see now, Solomon's finished building the temple. He did the temple of God first, and he's going to go on, and he's going to complete some other projects. But it says in verse number two here, that the Lord appeared to him a second time. Oh, isn't it wonderful to know that the Lord still speaks to us today? There was a great book that was written many years ago, and the title was, God Has Something to Say to You. You can hear him if you listen. It was kind of a long title, but it really summed up the book. God has something to say to us. If we will take the time to listen, he will speak to us. But this time the Lord appears to him, and he tells them, Solomon, I heard your prayers. Remember, Solomon had prayed to the Lord, and he'd asked the Lord for some specific things. 
And it's Solomon, he's saying, Solomon, I heard your prayers. I heard the prayers that you had for the people, for them to be blessed, for the throne to remain um, ex eternally. And, and he had all these prayers that he had prayed. And God says, I heard them, but there are conditions to these prayers. We know that God's blessings are ours, but there are prerequisites that he requires of us, not because God is a dictator, but because he ultimately knows the best way for us to live. He knows the best life for us to live. So he gives the Israelites conditions and he warns them. And he tells them that they are to walk before the Lord faithfully with integrity of heart and uprightness as David your father did. Those are the conditions. And do all I command and observe my decrees and laws. You know, it's interesting when the Lord tells us, sometimes he'll tell us and instruct us in things. And we'll think, oh, that's nice, that's for someone else. You know, especially you hear a message in church, you know, and the pastor talks about, you know, uh, marriages. And you want to nudge your husband and say, oh, that's for you, that's for you. Or your kids, you know, don't provoke your parents to laugh. Yeah, that's to wrath. That's for you, kids. That's for you. But no, God speaks to us through his word. And that's who we need to be focusing on, not everybody else. We don't need to be concerned about everybody else obeying God. We need to be concerned about us. And you know, here God knows Solomon's weaknesses. He knows the weaknesses of the children of Israel. And maybe at that point, oh, they're so excited. This project's been completed and they've seen God answer prayer and they're just on that mountaintop. But he knows that when real life comes, when day-to-day -day decisions come, we have to walk by this faith and obedience. And we need to listen to him. And if we discount God's warnings, it always gets us in trouble. And we see that here. Solomon and the children of Israel, again, walk down that pattern that we're so used to observing in them. They walk with the Lord, and then they begin getting carried away with wealth. They begin getting carried away with expansion of their lands. And we see that their focus does not remain on the Lord. And it causes them to have a spiral downward turn. I think that as I was reading this and studying and meditating, I was thinking, what are the things that help us to stay focused on the Lord? And now, what I know, notice in people that are very strong in the Lord and some of the greatest leaders I have ever met, and I have had the privilege of being with some very well-known leaders, is that they always have a tender heart towards God. If we will keep a tender heart towards the Lord, and when difficulties come our way, we have a choice. We can become bitter and hard, or we can remain tender in regards to the things that keep God's heart tender, his love and his compassion, believing that God's got our best interest in mind and that if hard things come our way, that we can trust him, that he's shaping our life. Dr. Ravi Zacharias writes in his book, The Grand Weaver, that we can live a life that allows us to be like God and to have a tender heart regarding the things that makes God's heart tender. And that's a great book. I'd encourage you to read it, The Grand Weaver. Then I think we need to keep a strong faith. It's really important, believers, that we stay in the word of God and we build up our faith. It says that we overcome by the testimony of the brethren and by the blood of the Lamb. So we need to read the testimonies throughout the Bible, the Old and New Testimonies. Remind ourselves, I like to read the Gospels through several times a year because it encourages me when Paul and Silas are broke out of prison and, and when you know, we see Jesus uh, come out of the grave and we, we see you know, Lazarus come forth out of the grave. I mean, these are such great testimonies. They encourage our faith. And we need to have a strong faith and that only comes by staying in the Word. And then I really feel that it's important that we filter everything through the lens of Jesus' sacrifice. For our heart to be tender and our minds to be faith-filled is we have to keep our minds on the cross. We have to keep our minds focused on what Jesus did for us. Remember, not what we can do for him, but what he can do for us. Because this work on the cross, 
This is the bridge for us to have relationship with God. There's only one way to God, and that's through His Son, Jesus Christ. And that's how we walk in a walk that is pleasing to the Lord. And that's how His blessings flow in us and through us on a continual basis. My prayer today is going to be right out of Philippians, that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you need strength in your walk today? Do you have a place, an area in your walk where you need to put more uh, of God's power in there so that you are an overcomer? Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, we come to you today and we ask that you give us the strength to walk this walk that is pleasing to you, to obey your decrees to follow you to walk with integrity of heart as you instructed Solomon and the children of Israel to walk in righteousness Lord these things we cannot do on our own but I know and I proclaim I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me we ask that you would do this for your glory in Jesus name Amen